Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Rich Weinfield, Executive Director of the Bay Area Discovery Museum, an organization that educates and delights children through exploration of the local environment and the diverse communities of the San Francisco Bay Area. Rich was previously the Vice President of Interactive and Educational Services at KQED Public Broadcasting and was the Superintendent of Schools at the Orinda Union School District. Rich has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us, and I would like to thank you, Rich, sure. for joining us today. So tell us a little bit about the Bay Area Discovery Museum. It's in a historic location. Right. It's in a beautiful location, and it focuses on it focuses on young children and specifically uh, young children and creativity. And we get a th a creativity um, through the platform of the natural, cultural, and built environment of the Bay Area. It's an incredible location, as you said, a seven and a half acre site, indoor and outdoor, with all sorts of platforms for kids uh, and their families to, well, from the kids' perspective, it's, it's a great opportunity to play. Kids are playing at the museum. But as children play, young children particularly, they're learning at the same time. So for us, it's about play and fun, but it's also about what happens when children play. And the facility is an old military base. We are in uh, the old Fort Baker. Uh, and right, during World War II, it was, uh, it was, it was part of the Army, and then uh, it was turned over to the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Uh, and a little over 20 years ago, we arrived um, to take it over as a children's museum. And you seem to have also preserved, as part of the historic preservation, some of the structures, some of the, mm -hmm. um, some of the different facilities, and then mm -hmm. you've taken those facilities without destroying them and repurposed them. Exactly. Could you talk a little yeah. bit about that process? Sure. The fort was, uh, was in pretty dilapidated shape. So the deal was we could come in and create a museum there, but we had to restore the buildings back to um, uh, their original look and feel. So. Uh, Everything from the outside is as it was uh, in the 40s, uh, to, the, to the extent where we can't paint a building a different color. It has to be the same color, uh, it has to be the same design. We can't put windows into buildings where none existed. On the inside, however, we, can, we have a lot more um, free reign. And so uh, uh, as you go into a building, it's like, oh my gosh, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. There's, a, there's just a lot of life there, uh, you know, kids and families. and. Um, uh, from the outside, it looks very calm and sedate, um, uh, and the parks love us for that reason. They love the fact that we, uh, we brought their buildings back to the way they looked. Um, uh, and also that we're putting children on the path of environmental stewardship, something very important to the GGNRA. Uh, we're the only children's museum in the country that's actually within a national park. So we take that part of our mission very seriously. So let's talk a little bit about the experience that is the Bay Area mm -hmm. Discovery Museum. You could have gone a number of different ways, but instead, you end up talking about the, the area, the Bay Area environment, but in a larger sense. Could you talk a little right. bit about your guiding principle and your space within the museum constellation of right. the Bay Area? Given the incredible location, it would have been foolish of us to have not somehow leveraged um, uh, the environmental piece of who we are. We're educators, so rather than just create some place that's fun for kids, we want to make sure that through the fun, um, I mean, you know, fun happens at Disneyland. Uh, fun happens in the in the in the rec room over at the local McDonald's. Um, uh, fun is easy. Um, what we wanted to do is is create something that, for the kids, was fun, but from our perspective, um, change kids' lives in some way. Um, and for us, that's children's creativity. So, in our opinion, young people are not being given the opportunities that they need to develop their so-called right brain skills or the creative sides. There's a tremendous emphasis on um, reading scores and math scores and analytic abilities, and those are important. Test taking. Test taking, exactly. Um, what young children are not getting the chance to do is to, um, to develop their creative chops. So what's, what's the harm in not developing your creative chops? Well, let's think about how life will be different in the 21st century compared with the 20th. Everybody talks about, oh, our children's future, and yes, creativity is a nice thing. When I talk about creativity, I'm not talking about artistic creativity, although that's a part of it. Um, we will all need to be creative in the 21st century because we don't really know what the 21st century will, will mean for us. So the people who will be successful in the 21st century will have developed their creative sides. So, um, I mean, in my lifetime, I'll, I'll give you an example, if I may. Um, I can remember uh, when portable phones were 
um, the size of a shoebox, and they weighed about 10 pounds, and they were very expensive. And today they're small, and they're incredibly powerful, and they're inexpensive. So uh, let's take an analogy. Let's, let's, let's think about solar cells for, for a second. Right now, solar cells are very large, they're inefficient, and they're expensive. But if technology continues to move at the same pace as it has in the last 20 years, in, in the next 20 years, solar cells, and imagine this, will be uh, the size of a postage stamp, a thousand times more powerful than current solar cells, and they'll cost a nickel apiece. So, so if you think about that, and you think about that being one of maybe a hundred different technological changes that are going to happen in the next 20 years, the world is going to change. And entire professions that exist today will not exist in 20 years. So we're talking about two types of creativity. One, the, the ability to conceive of something that does not exist mm -hmm. um, and, and to create mm -hmm. it. And two, the ability to deal with things that others create and apply them. Exactly, to the so-called connect the dots, to be able to see, aha, I see which way the wind is blowing. I see that this industry is, is not long for this world, but I see new industries that are going to emerge. And um, exactly, be able to put two and two and two together and to kind of figure out the future. So what does that have to do with a children's museum? And uh, how, does the, how does the children's exactly. museum foster that? The way young children develop their cre creative sides is through open-ended, child-centered play. So let me define that. Open-ended as opposed to closed-ended. Open-ended um, infers that there is no one way to play with something. Um, there's no right or wrong way, which is why kids, when they get toys, will often take the toy out of the box and play with the box. And then child-centered as opposed to adult-centered. Uh, I love Little League, dancing, dance classes, um, sports, etc. Those are all great for kids, but they are adult-centered activities. A child-centered activity is something in which the child makes the decision as to what he or she does. It's, it's, it's the old getting on the bike on Saturday morning and pedaling away and then not coming back until the sun goes down on Saturday night and just figuring out what it is you're going to do, you and your friends. What, how are you going to play? What kind of games are you going to create Is the yourselves? distinction that you're talking about here that, that in, in structured sports, mm -hmm. um, it does require a certain amount of adult supervision. There are rules to be followed right. so often it's an adult structured routine that the kids kind of populate. Is, is that the distinction that you're making? Exactly. So yeah. how, does, yeah. how does the uh, Bay Area Discovery Museum, obviously it's not being administered by a bunch of children. True. <laughs> um, but the children are coming into your environment and they're experiencing it. How does that distinction make itself felt so that the kids can explore as they, as they wish to? Because the in our exhibits at the museum and the separate elements within the exhibits, there are uh, an infinite number of ways to, to use them, to play with them, to, to create with them. So um, uh, when we have theater programs, for example, it's never um, actors on a stage performing for the kids. It's some kind of a, a dramatic experience in which the kids get involved in the actual performance. Oh, so the kids are and coming and then all of a sudden they're invited. They're in. The kids never come to the Bayer Discovery Museum to look at things. Never. It's always a matter of coming to the museum to be involved in things, to get their hands on things. Um, and uh, every exhibit, it's, it's, yes, from an adult perspective, we kind of know what we expect kids to do there. And we have found that 99 times out of 100, we're wrong. The kids will do things that we never expected them to do. Um, and we design uh, elements of the exhibits specifically for that purpose. And parents can, can experience through their child's eyes what it's, what it's like to really uh, play in that purest sense of the, of the word. And it's, it's hard for some parents. Um, parents <laughs> want to swoop in and say, here, dear, let me help you with that. And, and so we, in a, as diplomatic a way as possible, you know, want to provide the space for kids to, for kids to take the lead. You started off saying, yeah. and we're educators. Right. So could you talk a little bit about how that identity informs how you look and, and, and shape your programs? Everything that we create at the museum has a, uh, a basis in very solid research, um, uh, research in the field of uh, creativity. Um, there's no one single definition of creativity. Lots of folks have lots of definitions, but there's a tremendous amount of research that looks at various aspects of what we take to be creativity. So when we design a, 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 an element of one of our exhibits, we know the age of the children who are going to be playing with it. So we know from, uh, because we know Piaget and child development theory, uh, and we know where children are uh, sort of cognitively and emotionally, 
we know the kind of uh, exhibit that's going to challenge them, but not so much of a challenge that they're going to become frustrated and check out on it. Um, and um, every element, we've got hundreds of elements at the museum, if somebody says, well, why do you have that canoe there? Or how come you have that dump truck in that particular exhibit? We can actually cite research as to um, what it is that we're trying to accomplish with that element and, and the success or failure of it. My board members and my public are increasingly wanting to know how do we measure success? You know, what are the metrics here? Uh, and what I tell them is, I can't say that your kids will come to the museum and uh, will increase their, their test-taking abilities by 10%. Mm -hmm. that's, that's silly. And I don't even think public schools can make that claim. But um, we know over the long term what it takes for children to develop. We know that public schools and, frankly, a lot of, in a lot of homes, children aren't getting the opportunities to do that. Um, and so we can, we, can, we can state with pretty good confidence that um, coming one time, your, your kid will have fun come here more frequently, the more frequently that, uh, with, that they come, um, the more they're going to be de developing that, those right brain skills. What's interesting uh, to me as well is um, the Bay Area is known for its uh, creativity in, in certain areas, in, in the arts, in, in business, certainly in new technologies, mm -hmm. in biotech, and, in, and in, uh, in, um, in information technology as well. Is, is, is that part of the sensibility that is driving your board's involvement and Indeed. your funders' involvement? Particularly in the fundraising uh, uh, sphere, we talk a lot about why the Bay Area needs a place like the Bay Area Discovery Museum. I mean, we, are, we, we think of ourselves as the Bay Area's incubator for creativity and innovation. That the kids who come to the museum today will be those technologists, they'll be the uh, physicians in 15 or 20 years. So, um, so yes, it's, it's, it's very important for us. And it's how we've gotten real traction with the concept of creativity. Um, five years ago, creativity wasn't our focus. Our focus was on fun, and it was on sort of a, a broad uh, child development category. Um, and child development is, is, if you talk to an educator, that's great. If you talk to, a, to a foundations, or you talk to the Department of Education, or you talk to even um, uh, folks in the Bay Area who are potential donors to the organization, uh, they need something a little bit more focused. Could you talk a little bit about the position of the Bay Area Discovery Museum with other creative institutions? There is an incredibly rich panoply of, of organizations. Talk a little bit about, for example, the Exploratorium, which also examines science but it has a different focus, and the Bay Area Discovery Museum, and how you, uh, you interact, how you view your place amongst this. Sure. So uh, when children sort of age out of the Bayer Discovery Museum, they typically age into the Exploratorium and the Cal Academy. Right. Um, we're always looking for ways to partner with those organizations. I mean, they're great uh, uh, places to go, and uh, we refer folks to them all the time. One of the reasons that we uh, focus particularly on six months to eight years is it provides us with a niche that um, our feeling is we can own that age bracket. Right. Uh, and uh, I don't want to be competing with Exploratorium and Cal Academy or the Lawrence Hall of Science or, or some of the other places that serve uh, uh, kids because uh, there are a lot of them in the Bay Area. Uh, I want to work collaboratively with them, uh, but I also want to own something, and we own that space, that six months, eight years, particularly when it comes to children and creativity. So uh, it's nothing but symbiotic between all of us. How do you reach out to people to make them aware of the Bay Area Discovery Museum? How do you draw audiences in and how do you retain audiences? That's a real good question uh, because uh, we're under-resourced uh, and uh, we should have a marketing budget that's five times our current budget. So uh, that's a constant challenge for us. Uh, we've gotten very successful the last couple of years uh, online um, uh, with our Facebook page and our, you know, our, 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 our presence at Twitter and, and, and so other social networking sites. In fact, we had a we had an event on New Year's Eve that we decided at the last minute we would do it. Let's do, we decided let's do a ball drop for, uh, for kids at noon on New Year's Eve. Um, uh, and we didn't have time to really promote it, but we, we put it up online on a number of uh, social networking sites. Um, and to our amazement, uh, we had five times as many people come to the event as we had room for. I mean, it was, the place was mobbed. And it, it, it demonstrated to us the power of social networking. So we're really, uh, we're using those a lot because they're, uh, relatively low cost ways to get our, 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 uh, our message out. We are very, very selective about it because we just don't have the, the money to do a better job of it. But if, if you've got any advice from me or if, if, if any of the folks who are watching this tape have any advice from me, I'm, I'm, I'm really very open to how can we be more creative about marketing? Because sometimes we've, you know, I talk to folks and say, 
gosh, I've lived here for, for, for years. I didn't know that you existed over there. Um, and that's always a little troubling. And uh, in terms of, of looking at, at children, you've, you've talked about children as if um, children are kind of a generic whole, but of course children have particular backgrounds, they come from different socioeconomic uh, areas, different ethnic groups, there are sometimes linguistic differences between groups of children. How do you deal with those kinds of differences? Well, some of them are easy. I mean, uh, no, I shouldn't say they're easy, they're, they're obvious. Um, so, for example, all of our signage is trilingual on site. It's all English, Spanish, Chinese, because um, those we, we get large contingents from the uh, Latino and uh, Asian populations in the Bay Area. Um, and we, we try to hire people on our staff who are a reflection of the various cultures of the Bay Area. Um, but but we, we, we can and we should do more. I mean, I say to folks who have never heard of us, there are three things you need to know about us. One is that we're fun for, for, for kids and families. Two, we're all about creativity. And three, we are those things for all people in the Bay Area, regardless of the zip code, regardless of the socioeconomic group. We want to be here for them. We've created a, a network of partnerships with uh, Head Start centers and child development centers in San Francisco, Marin, and Contra Costa counties. So, um, and we've gotten grant money to support this. So we actually get thousands of visits a month from um, children and their teachers from underserved communities. Hmm. Um, uh, and the deal is, if we do a partnership with the child development center, we'll have them come to the museum five times during the course of a year, four times with their teachers, and the fifth time with their parents. The idea being we want it to be their museum. Right. Uh, and then at the end of the year, every family gets a, um, a membership to the museum. So uh, uh, we make very aggressive efforts to serve uh, all kids uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, it's the kind of thing that you can always do more, better, faster, but, um, but we're working on it. How did you end up deciding to come to the Bay Area Discovery Museum from a career as a school superintendent, from a career at KQED? Um, and now this seems to be a, a departure, although, of course, the educational content. And could you describe a little bit about what you were doing at KQED? Because that's also quite sure. interesting. I was vice president for uh, uh, initially for education. Uh, and our job was to take the great programming that was on air and take it into the community to work with teachers and families to, to extend the value of, of that content. And then after I'd been at KQD for three years, I also picked up uh, a new division at that time, which was the Interactive Emerging uh, Technologies Division. Um, so I had, I had those two different teams there. One was very hands-on, interactive, the education piece, and the other was obviously uh, was, was, uh, was a digital team. Um, uh, and, uh, and it was great. But I'd been there for uh, a little over seven years, and I saw the, uh, the Bayer Discovery Museum position. I had taken my son there. Um, he's now 27. So I'd taken him a long time ago to the Bay Area Discovery Museum, so I still remembered it and had a lot of affection for it. And, and frankly, um, I, was, I was hungry to, uh, to lead an organization again. I mean, to be a, a vice president in a big company like KQED, mm -hmm. I had a lot of autonomy, and uh, I, I very much enjoyed it. But um, uh, there's something about running an organization, being accountable for everything right. that goes on in an organization that uh, I, was, uh, I was ready for. And what kind of transformations have you brought in and, and do you intend to bring in to the uh, Bay Area Discovery Museum going forward? Well, the transition is an interesting one because the, the museum uh, was a wonderful place when I got there, um, but it, was, it still retained most of its, it, it sort of had a, in a way, a startup mentality. I mean, things were still done the way it had been done 15, 16 years ago. Things were done on the back of the envelope. There weren't a lot of systems and processes. We needed to rev up our development department uh, a lot more. We needed to work with board members as donors more and, and not as people who roll up their sleeves and actually do the work. Mm -hmm. Nonprofits, when they start, as you know, uh, board members are very much involved in actually getting the work done. Right. Uh, and then as they mature, I think, uh, they take a step back and it's more focused on development than it is actually the day-to-day -day operations. Governance and fundraising exactly. as opposed to actually doing the work, it's, the work itself. Exactly. So that's kind of where I've, uh, I've been focusing is on, is on it, it's time for us to, to take that step up. And you've also talked about your desire to boost marketing substantially. Um, what is your view of using uh, information technology? Again, it's, it's part of our sort of our development. We've, um, we used to, we used to, folks would come in, they'd, they'd uh, flash their, their membership card, it was a cardboard card, and they'd walk into the museum. Um, and we gathered zero data. Uh, from our from our members and our visitors, 
we've switched to a system now, which, which, which is a swipe card uh, system, where when folks come in now, they swipe their card, and now I can, I can ask the question, well, okay, who comes here once a week? Let's, let's do a special appeal to those once a week folks. Who are people who come and then they don't, they, they don't come back for six months? Let's, let's talk to them to find out what was, a, what was it about the experience that, um, that, that has, you know, has not drawn them back. So um, internally as an organization, uh, we're becoming much more sophisticated with how we can use information uh, to help us further our mission. Um, so you're, you're using information technology as an audience development tool absolutely. And, and also as a strategic yeah. planning tool? As a planning tool, to the extent that we can gather data from folks, uh, uh, leavened with qualitative information as well mm -hmm. about how we can do our job better. Uh, uh, to take one example, we're uh, in the middle of a project now to, um, to, to figure out how we can better serve Spanish-speaking communities in the Bay Area. It's one of the fastest growing demographic groups. Yeah. Um, and we want to be there for them. but there's been a traditional reluctance within uh, Latino communities to go to museums. And so um, we're gathering data, both survey data, but also uh, we're doing focus groups to kind of get at, at what's up. Uh, one, for example, one of the first things we learned was that um, there is a perception of the word museum as uh, a big, old, musty building with long, dark hallways. Uh, uh, and that's clearly not what the Bay Area Discovery Museum is about. But so we figured, aha, we, we, we need to somehow change the perception in these communities. Uh, so, um, so yes, yes, for, for fundraising purposes, for marketing, and for strategic purposes. Let's pick up on, on, on your point about um, how you wish to use and not use right. information technology. <laughs> I get asked often uh, why we don't have uh, computer labs or why we don't have uh, more opportunities for children to actually go hands-on with, with technology. Electronics and blinking exactly. lights and buttons yeah. and all that exciting stuff. I mean, e I've even gotten uh, some, uh, some tentative uh, feelers from technology organizations that have implied that they would be interested in funding uh, a new exhibit right. uh, if, if, if we could focus it around the technology. And uh, we, we have a sort of an un unwritten rule that uh, it's a screen-free zone at the museum. Um, by the time children, and, and there's, uh, there's research on this, by, by the time children are 13 years old, they're spending over six hours a day in front of screens. Six hours a day. Right, on the contrary, kids need uh, tactile uh, experiences. They need to get their hands on things, you know? So, um, so, so we, right, we don't, we don't have screens. I mean, our art studio, for example, um, there's no computer, uh, you know, assisted or, um, uh, or online opportunities for kids to, to be artists. But we have large painting windows. Uh, I mean, large, like they're uh, eight, you know, eight feet by four feet, and um, paints. And kids are encouraged to paint on the windows, and um, and then to take squeegees and squeegee them off and paint again. To me, that's uh, that's a success when kids are getting their you know, pulling up their, get, getting their hands into stuff, and they're, they're uh, experimenting. Um, uh, so uh, as long as I'm there, and I suspect for, for a long time to come, the Bayer Discovery Museum will be a screen-free zone. Um, uh, they're just, there's just more to life. So where does the Bayer Discovery Museum head from here? Some museums are, are engaged in capital campaigns. Mm -hmm. Some museums are building out an expansion. Some are building out their programs. What's the next 10 years for the museum look yeah. like? We'll probably do a small campaign uh, once the environment really does get better. Uh, it's not going to be a huge, uh, we have uh, one uh, building on our site um, that is vacant because it's not earthquake retrofitted. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's going to take some, some resources to, to make that happen. Um, so, so yes, that'll happen. I've got a lot of deferred maintenance needs because the budget has been so tough the last few years that I have not been able to invest the way I should. But uh, one of the exciting things that we're planning for the future is something we're tentatively calling the Center for Creativity and the Young Child. And that'll be sort of a think tank um, that exists at the museum, but it'll be our outward facing arm. So the center would uh, sponsor a speaker series, uh, folks talking about creativity in children. Um, we're gonna invite uh, scholars to come, visiting scholars who are doing research in that area. Mm -hmm. We're gonna encourage uh, through partnerships with uh, universities, uh, Folks to come do their doctoral search on uh, doctoral research on site. Uh, I see a, uh, uh, a program of uh, a screening in partnership with KQED, a series of films 
you know, about young children, followed by panels to, mm -hmm. to um, uh, talk about it. Uh, a lot of our growth in the future is going to be focused on how do we push the concept of children and creativity out. We have uh, two, between 250 and 300,000 visits a year at the museum, and that's great. Um, but I'm not pushing to increase that number. What I'm pushing for is impact. And I think that we can have um, tremendous impact by taking what we already do well and um, training teachers, providing opportunities for parents, as I say, and for raising awareness among the public. I mean, when I talked earlier about the, the, the 21st century and how things are really going to be different, I think that 90, 95 percent of the public doesn't really, it's not that they don't get it, they just haven't stop to really think about, well, what does the future mean? I mean, they, they may think of it in, in terms of uh, oh, environmental challenges or you know, nuclear challenges from a negative perspective, or they, they think of the future as sort of a you know, Dick Tracy two-way radio and, and, and flying cars. That's sort of the old, the old uh, idea. But I think that uh, once the future is democratized, once we all really get how the future will be different, then there's going to be a tremendous uh, sense of how do we get our kids ready for this and, and we'll be positioned to, to lead. Well, it's a wonderful facility and, and thank you so much, Rich, for sharing well, Thank your you very much. I appreciate us. the opportunity to talk about it. I, I get, I get uh, enthusiastic about it because I'm, I am passionate about it and we all are over at the museum. So. Sir, thank okay. you for your insights. Sure.